So this video is all about orbiting, orbiting under gravity. What is the orbital period? How do you orbit the Earth? And also, what is the Clark belt? What is a geostationary orbit, etc.? It's a part of the A-level physics syllabus. And I think we're already very aware that the force, the gravitational force on an object is this equation. So force is gravitational universal gravitational constant times the mass of the object that creates the gravitational field times the mass of the object that is um, within the field that has a force acting on it divided by the separation squared. And that's what the gravitational force would be, right? So if we picture, let's say this is Earth, and then there is a satellite or an object that is going around the Earth. We can say that the force on this object is basically equal to this. It provides the force for orbit. So if we want it to orbit, then we're going to have centripetal motion. And we can we have learned from previous videos concerning centripetal motion that the force or the centripetal force required for orbiting or for cent centripetal motion and circular motion uh, with a speed v is denoted by this. So if we equal it to each other, then we can basically cross out the m, because this is going to be gmm divided by r squared times r out of m v squared. We can cross this out, and we can cross this out. So we eventually get the velocity squared by which this satellite would orbit Earth um, is equal to gm divided by r. So what we can get from that is that m cancels out and therefore all bodies, regardless of individual mass, travel at the same speed in the same orbit. And this is a great thing. So, you know, if you are an astronaut and we, we were in a satellite or some sort of spaceship, let's say that's a very poor drawing of a spaceship, and if you stepped out of your spaceship, you are very small compared to the spaceship just very gigantic. Um, however, you will not be flung out of the orbit because you're much smaller. No matter uh, how heavy you are compared to however heavy the spaceship is, you're going to travel at the same speed when you have the same mass and also the same separation from it. What this means is that on Earth, for all the gravitational fields created by Earth, the same orbit will have the same separation, right? And therefore, they will all travel at the same velocity. This is also great because two satellites in the same orbit will not bump into each other because they're traveling at the same speed as each other. So I thought that was very nice. Then we can talk about the orbital period, also denoted by capital T. And we've had a lot of definitions for period especially for waves, but in this sense, the orbital period is the time taken for a complete orbit. So we know that, you know, if this was Earth and then this was the orbit, that whatever this is, this is going to be 2 pi r, right? Assuming that this is r. Well, that means that we can basically show the orbital period um, because the velocity or the speed is basically distance divided by time taken. And so if we do this, the distance traveled is 2 pi r, time taken is orbital period t. And we've also shown from the past slide that v squared equals to gm divided by r. So square root gm divided by r is 2 pi r divided by t. And then if we take the square root and we square this whole entire thing, then we get gm divided by r is 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared. So t squared is 4 pi squared r to the power of 3 because this would go over here divided by gm. And this gives us this equation. This is basically the same thing. We just separated this with a bracket um, in case it makes it easier to do so. So that is the formula for orbital period t. It, we can know it merely by knowing the, the separation as well as the mass of the, the object that is causing the gravitational field. For example, in this case, that would be Earth. And we will also have to know our universal gravitational constant. But this and this, they're constant, so we will only have to know these two to realize 
how much time it takes to actually orbit around something. So now that we have the equation, um, and the equation tells us that t equals 4 pi squared by gm is this squared. So now that we have this equation, we can talk about um, the orbits that are around Earth. So or Earth has one natural satellite, and a satellite is anything that basically orbits around Earth or a, a planet in that case. Um, and that's the moon. That's what is orbiting around us and has been orbiting around us without human intervention. However, we have a lot of artificial satellites. We have hundreds of spacecrafts and debris as well. So since V squared is GM divided by R, we can show that the closer the satellite is to the Earth, the faster it must move to keep itself in orbit. Because if this becomes smaller, then this will become bigger and therefore velocity will become bigger. So we can talk a bit about what artificial satellites are. Well, they're used for a lot of different things. First part of it is observations and it's in specific terms, it's observations of Earth. You can observe the Earth for commercial reasons. You can observe it for military reasons. You can observe it for environmental reasons and meteorological reasons. You could also launch something out of the Earth. So for example, you launch um, a spacecraft from here to here, and you wouldn't use this to observe Earth, but instead you would use it to observe space beyond it. Um, and it's much better for these spacecrafts to be above the surface of the Earth. Um, it gives them a big advantage when observing other planets and other galaxies. So we say that there is also astronomical observation, but it differs from these observations because they observe the Earth while they observe something further than the Earth. We also have GPS navigation and we have telecommunications or broadcasting. So for navigation, you need a minimum of three different satellites in order to get a precise location. And it's much better if it is four separate GPS satellites. So you can see that there are different shapes of orbits here. And what we can say is that this orbit, which goes around the Earth, is pretty simple. This can be called a circular orbit. And this one, which is much further from the Earth, and it is elliptical, it is an oval kind of shape. It's not totally a perfect circle. We call this an elliptical or orbit. And so they, they differ because circular orbits are going to be the same distance from the center of the Earth all the time. Elliptical orbits are going to have one or two points that are much further away. So the circular orbit would pass over the poles around 16 times per day. And since the Earth is also rotating below it, it sees a different strip within each orbit. So we can, we can picture that. We can say that this is the Earth and it's, it's orbiting this way, right? However, if the satellite is orbiting um, this way, it would see a different strip of Earth because it had already orbited around, uh, it had already kind of rotated, the Earth had rotated, by the time that it came back for, from its um, initial position. So yeah, elliptical orbits are much more distant and therefore they would probably rotate and orbit the Earth much more slowly. Um, and therefore we can say that they have a bigger period then we go into geostationary orbits, and geostationary orbits is one in which a satellite is positioned so that as it orbits, the Earth rotates below it at the same rate, and I should add, at the same direction as well. So this means that it's always looking at the same, same spot on Earth. Uh, we could say that, you know, Maybe you live somewhere, and then if you look up, there's one star that's like abnormally bright, and you realize that, no, that's not a star, that's a satellite. And you realize that it's always there. When you look out at night, it's always there kind of at the same position, and you might see more than one. Where I live, I see two. And they're always in the same position. If you notice that, then that means that's a geostationary orbit. And that's basically one that's going to stay on top of wherever you live for the whole time. So that is going to be a bit like this one right here. It's going to rotate same direction as Earth. 
and it's going to rotate at the same speed that Earth rotates in. And therefore, you're always going to be looking at the exact same satellite. It's always going to remain on top of the exact same spot. So why is this necessary? Well, they're very necessary for things like telecommunication or GPS tracking, especially. Um, it's not really for observationary things, because why would you look at the same spot on Earth again and again? But it's more for, it's more commonly used at least for um, GPS or communications. When you telephone with your friends or something, it's always going to be uh, using the satellite that is directly above where you live. So we've previously concluded that every single, um, every single object, no matter what its mass is, if they're traveling at the same separation away from Earth, then they're going to have the same speed. So what this means is that if they are traveling at the same speed as Earth does and in the same directions, it means every single geostationary orbit, orbital satellite ever is going to be traveling in the exact same orbit. So yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, we can calculate this. So we know that t squared is this equation. And we can talk about the time. So the time is 24 hours, right? They should make one orbit in 24 hours because that's what Earth does. So 24 hours is basically 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. This gives us um, 86400 zero, zero seconds. We know the mass of the Earth is 6 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. And we know that the universal gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. So now that we have all of these values, we can figure out what the, um, the orbit is, how far it has to be away from Earth in order to orbit in this way. So we can say that 86400 squared is 4 pi squared divided by uh, the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times mass. Um, and then we have our cube. So if we take this whole entire value over here, and then we multiply together, and then we also do a cube root, for that value, we're going to get what R is. And R is, to put things short, 4.23 times 10 to the power of 7 meters. For reference, 6400000, that is Earth's um, radius. That's how this much is. And right now, we're looking at something that is bigger than that, much, much bigger than that. Over here, we have 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. And here, we have 4.23 times 10 to the power of 7. So it's much, much bigger. And so if we look at it, um, it would look probably something like this. It's actually orbiting really far away from us. So lastly, geostationary orbits are circular orbits, and they have a lifetime of around 10 years. Um, so why can't they just orbit indefinitely? Because, you know, the force is being provided by the Earth. Well, that's because they often drift out of the orbit, and the fuel is required to put it back into its original position. And this fuel that is required to put it back into its original position is going to run out after 10 years. Why do they drift out of orbit? Probably things like air resistance, which is very negligible at such a height, but it still exists. Um, orbit. The orbit is going to be named the Clark Belt. So this exact orbit that all of the geostationary orbits orbit around, it's called the Clark Belt. And so if you look at a geostationary orbit that is above wherever you live, you can say that's something that's traveling in the Clark Belt that's going to run out within 10 years or so. And that's about it for orbiting around Earth um, and for this topic. Thank you for watching.